In the previous lesson, we looked at the different terms used in regular expressions. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to create a regular expression. Now, it's important to know that different programming languages have different syntax for creating regular expressions. But one of the common syntax that you'd find in most programming languages is the literal notation. For example, with JavaScript, you can create regular expressions using the literal notation or using the rejects constructor. So let's look at the syntax for literal notation. In literal notation, you have a forward slash, then you have your pattern, and then you end the pattern with the second forward slash. So everything between those forward slashes would be your pattern but after the second forward slash you can also pass your flags flags are optional you only use them when you need them don't worry about flags for now we're going to learn about flags in the next lesson in this course i'm not going to focus on one specific programming language i'm not going to focus on javascript or python or php i'm going to be teaching regular expression which you can apply to almost any programming language that you use but just for example sake i want to show you how to create a regular expression using the other syntax that I talked about in JavaScript, which is the rejects constructor. So in your JavaScript, you can use the new keyword followed by the rejects constructor. I don't know, rejects, rejects, rejects. Well, R-E-G-E-X-P constructor. This means you are instantiating a rejects object. And then this constructor accepts two arguments. The first one is the pattern, which can be a string or a literal rejects. And the second one is a string, which contains the flags. The flags are also optional, so you can pass only the first argument if you don't need flags. But like I said, we're not going to focus on JavaScript in this course. I just wanted to show you that different languages may have different kinds of syntax for creating regular expressions. Now, in the coming lessons in this course, we'll look at the various patterns and the various flags you can use for regular expressions. But for this lesson, let's look at the very simple regular expression. Like I said in the intro of this video, we'll be testing the regular expressions that we create on this website. This is rejects101.com. So you can also go on this website and you can test out whatever we do in this course. Here you can enter your pattern and then here you can enter the string for which you want to apply that pattern to. As you see on the left here, we have something called flavors, which are programming languages. If I click on this question mark here, you can see the different languages here. You have JavaScript, PHP, Perl, Python, Ruby, and all of these things. And for these languages, you have rejects engines like PC RE2 and um, Google's RE2 engine, the Java flavor, and all these things. Like I said, different programming languages may have different ways they use their regular expressions. For example, something you may be able to do in a particular programming language or in a particular flavor, that thing may not be supported in another flavor. But in this course, I'm going to try to cover the fundamentals of regular expression, which you can apply in almost every, if not every programming language. So for this course, I'm just going to use the ECMAScript flavor, but you can also use other flavors, PHP, Python, or something else. Now see something here. In the Python programming language, they use an R followed by opening quotes, and then you have the closing quotes at the end here. But going back to javascript you see we have the forward slash and the forward slash here so these are sub two differences that you can find in different programming languages but let's just stick with the javascript flavor now let's say you have a string like my name is Dillion, and now you want to write a pattern that matches name. Well, here you can write a simple pattern like N followed by A followed by M followed by E. And as you can see here, name is matched in this string. Name is a substring of this whole string, and this is what matches the pattern we have defined here. We can also change this pattern to capital D followed by I, L, L, I, O, N. You can see that also matches. We can also have M followed by Y. We can also have I followed by S. Now let's look at another string example. My channel is decode and I like to code. Now let's say we want to match code in this string. We can write C followed by O followed by D followed by E. And you can see code is now matched in this string. But one thing you notice here is that we have two occurrences of code. We have two substrings that can actually match this pattern because we have code here and we also have code here, but this other code is not matched. Now the default behavior of regular expressions is to match the first occurrence, the first substring that matches the pattern. Even if there are other substrings that matches the pattern in that string, the regular expression would not return 
them. The regular expression starts searching from the beginning and when it finds the first occurrence, then it stops searching. So how do we change this default behavior? How do we tell the regular expression, don't only return the first occurrence, return as many occurrences that matches that pattern? Well, this is where we use flags. And if you remember in my previous lesson where I talked about terms used in regular expressions, I mentioned that flags are used to change the default behavior of regular expressions. So in the next lesson, we're going to learn about flags. And not just that, you can see in this lesson, we're using simple example like name, code, dillion, you know, all of this simple stuff. Well, moving on, we'll be seeing advanced regular expressions that you can create. So in the next lesson, we're going to learn about flags and then we'll see how different flags can change different default behaviors in regular expressions.